Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to this session of the uh, new master course in biomedical research. This will be a Q&A session where you can clarify uh, all your doubts. Uh, my name is Philippa Nunes. I'm the executive manager uh, of IMEM Training Hub. And I have with me four uh, of the uh, members of the scientific commission of this new master. Um, uh, briefly, uh, so uh, we will start with a presentation uh, from uh, Luis Grassa, that is the coordinator of the master course. So I will pass the word to Luis Grassa. Hello, good afternoon. So this is an international master course. All the teaching will be in English, and that is the reason why we decided also to have this uh, session in English. What I would like to start doing is sharing uh, a screen with some basic information, and then we can move on to address more specific questions. And for that, I have with me Luisa Lopes, who is a neuroscientist and leading a research group in neurosciences, Pedro Simas, virologist that leads a, a, a a research group dedicated to virology, of course, and Edgar Gomes, that has been doing important work related with the nuclear positioning of muscle cells. Uh, of course, that the scientific disciplines will be on their own a topic for passionate presentations, but today we will be discussing with you these masters. And the, uh, we are in the middle of the application period that finishes on July 10, and the, the classes will start in October. These are the websites from where you can get more information and from where you can uh, fill the application form. Uh, overall, we want to have a master's degree that covers different aspects of biomedical sciences without a, a specialization in any particular subject, so you'll find that many of the subjects will cover all the research interests of IMM in the medical school. But what it distinguishes this from other masters is that we will be focusing on methodology that will drive uh, self-learning with a lot of tutorial uh, teaching in order to make the students able to pursue the research projects in the future. So the overall objective is, as it states here, to prepare independent, creative, and so on, and so on, and so on. But it can be summarized in a more concise statement. It is, we want to create the best research students in the future. So the objective of this master's program is to create PhD students of exceptional quality. And that is the reason why we need to be uh, uh, selecting a group of very, very talented students and to provide a, a course that is different from all the master courses that are available in being directed to making these students into an excellent PhD student. So that is the goal, okay? And to achieve this goal, we cannot rely on traditional teaching. So you, we have to rely on a strategy that is very much based on tutorial teaching, on selective teaching. So each student, so we don't have, for example, in this program, we don't have um, uh, uh, optional courses because we want that each discipline itself will be tailor-made to the, to, to the interests of the student. So we will have freedom to achieve that. And, uh, but of course, that it will, it will give a lot of, it will, uh, it, it will be necessary to have a lot of dedication from these students for this to work. So the students will be uh, stimulated to acquire critical skills to enroll in a doctoral program, not so much knowledge, but attitudes that will make them uh, exceptional PhD students. And in addition, they will be exposed to a number of experimental uh, approaches that will provide them the basic understanding, not 
to be independent users from the start, but that's to allow them to learn quickly when they will start to, to use these tools for their research as part of, of, of their research career. So there will be a, a big emphasis on analytical techniques, imaging, microscopy, uh, cell and molecular biology, computational biology, use of animal models. So in the end of the course, the students will be certified as researchers able to conduct experiments with animals and uh, data analysis. In addition to these technical skills, there will be transversal skills, namely science communication, how to communicate results, bioethics, management, critical thinking, that will be something that will be recurrent in all uh, subjects of, the, of this course. And of course, autonomy and above all, creativity. We want to have students that will be able to contribute ideas and to follow that ideas in adequate way. Uh, the career prospect is, as I mentioned, to have, uh, this is particularly useful for students that want to have a career in research, in biomedical research. We want students that have already completed the first cycle degree with an above average uh, classifications and achievements and from all different disciplines. We will not select based on nationality and we only select on the basis of the, 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 the potential of the students to become an exceptional researcher because that is what we aim for. This is the overview of the course and briefly we will have four initial modules with four under four different topics that are big pillars of research in IMM and the medical school, cancer biology, infection and immunity, cardiovascular biology, or neurosciences. But this is not to give knowledge, textbook knowledge about these uh, topics, but rather to have a, a framework for the students to think creatively, to learn the basics of the scientific methods around these topics. So this way, the student will become familiar with the topic, but above all, will develop the critical thinking thoughts that will be important for subsequent work as a researcher. Then we will have some modules that are dedicated to experimental tools, namely bioinformatics and data analysis, uh, animal models of biomedical research that will lead to certification, and uh, two big modules of advanced techniques that cover microscopy, flow cytometry, molecular biology, uh, experiments, and, and so on. Then a module on bioethics and science communication. And then the fun part begins with lab rotations where the students will have a tutorial uh, relationship with postdocs that will uh, give, provide an experience of uh, work in a laboratory and having the students rotating through three different laboratories so that they can experience what is research in different topics of biomedical science, immunology, neurosciences, whatever. And finally, the, in the second year, project design and the dissertation where uh, now without wheels, the students will have an opportunity to be engaged in a research project and to apply what they have learned over this over the, this, this, the, this, the course of the first year and to prove to us that they are turning into excellent researchers. That is what we aim for. So, uh, so the course will be held in English. You will not feel odd speaking in English because in fact, our institute is extremely international and all our laboratories have people from different nationalities. So it, it even in cafeteria, you need to speak English in order to communicate with other people because our institute is like the United Nations in, in Israel, okay? And uh, the registration process follows the rules of the medical school. But what is really important is that we want also to commit our enthusiasm with, this, with the students. And we found way to fully support the tuition fees from all the students. So, all the, 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 the fees will be covered by a grant from IMM, but in turn, we, uh, we want to receive uh, above average dedication during these, uh, 
during this master's course. My colleagues that I already presented to you and Claudio Franco cannot be here today, but I hope we will meet him in due course and we'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. So we have already one question. Uh, I re remember everyone that you can uh, put uh, write your questions on the YouTube chat and we will answer them. So the first question is, uh, as an application condition, if it's necessary to have a bachelor degree classification higher than 16 values? I don't know who wants to answer, maybe now Pedro Simas, just to give the word to Pedro. Uh, okay, uh, hello to everybody. Um, uh, the, the direct ans answer to that question is we, it's a bit vague in, in the sense that we value a lot the scientific merit. So obviously classifications above 16 are welcome. However, we have an interview and students should not be shy with uh, Pedro, are you here? Maybe we lost Pedro? I think we lost Pedro. Focus. I can finish what Pedro was saying. Uh, what Pedro was saying is that we favor applications above 16 degrees, but in the interview, stu exceptional students that have a classification of 15, if we find that they have exceptional qualities, they will have an opportunity to be accepted into this uh, into this program. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, I wanted to start by asking: Due to the pandemic situation, will the first semester be presential? Can you answer, Luis? Uh, we are preparing ourselves for the first semester to be presential. You should bear in mind the fact that the group of students is very small. It will only be 10 students. And in the medical school, uh, although the large class for hundreds of students will not take place, the teaching for smaller groups of students, uh, according to what is known today, will be presential, yes. One question from Vladimir Gilas is regarding the laboratory rotations. Are there specific labs for the rotations to be done in, or can they be tailored to the interests of the student? Luisa, can you answer this question? Sure. So I think it will have a combination of both. Uh, let's say that we have some lab rotation that will be made available, but of course, as in our for those who know our PhD program, we, we uh, value a lot the initiative of the students. And so if one does not, you know, fit or thinks that any, um, any of the laboratorium wouldn't fit the interest, we, will, we, we can think about it. But anyway, I think that's not a problem to, for, for you to be concerned because we'll have a lot of laboratoriums. We have several labs interested and in the, the, let's see, the offer will be amazing it's, it, it will be very diverse so i'm sure everyone will be you know will be um, happy about the the offer can i add something to this so i want to, to tell also that this is an opportunity that we want the student in these lab rotations to experience different things so it is not the so the big match will be for the dissertation the lab rotations they have to be in three different laboratories to increase the experience of diversity. So of course that it is likely that the student will have one favorite topic, but we want these rotations to pass through different uh, labs to different topics to increase this exposure. Yes, that, let me say something. I was lost <laughs> somehow. 
but yeah, that's it's extremely important that you you have to learn and be exposed to lots of biomedical research methodologies and uh, subjects in order to um, in order to uh, to be to not, to go to the next step, which is the PhD, which is a much more original and creative uh, phase of your career. But you need the tools. You need to learn how to use the tools then to, to do a PhD. So now one question for Edgar from Pablo, Pablo Huertas. Is it possible to apply if I already have a master? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think it is possible. Um, it's predicted by the, 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 the internal rules. Um, but uh, I guess it would have to be very well justified why the interest of having a second, a second, a third or fourth master. Um, and so that would be evaluated by, by the panel. Uh, Patricia Silva is, asked, is asking, are you looking for a CV, a personal statement outside of the box or something more standard? Pedro, would you like to? Yes, I would love to answer that question. We <laughs> yeah. want people outside of the box. So that answers your question. So by all means, be creative. Or no, no statement at all. No, I'm no joking. No statements <laughs> like I was born since I was a child to well, I wanted to be a scientist. Obviously, you can think that and you I'm sure you some people feel like that. But um, yeah, be out of the box, be creative. You, you just imagination is 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 your limit. I was in Cambridge for 10 years and uh, I was very impressed when I was there and I went to my first interviews for a PhD and people said two things to me. Cambridge will change you. And in Cambridge, imagination is your limit. So be creative. You have the highest density of scientists in the world per square meter and Nobel Prize winners and all that stuff. So we don't have Nobel Prize winners in IMM. Hopefully one day we will. But we have wonderful scientists, young, middle-aged, old like me. So it's good. You will enjoy it. Be out of the box. OK, good. Inês is, as Inês D, D is asking, what is the most interesting aspect of this master for a biolight student like me? For a bio what? Biolike, biolike. <laughs> Would you like to answer that, Luís? Yes, sure. So I think that this master is, uh, is unique in allowing you we have a really tailor-made uh, opportunity to follow your interests. So if you want to do research, so if you feel yourself that what you will be in five years or 10 years ago, or 10 years in the future, you'll be doing research. So this is a, a PhD for you because it gives you the type of preparation that other masters do not. If uh, this is not your objective. Maybe this is that's not the the, the best uh, choice for you because this will be very geared towards research and making people uh, acquiring the right skills to be to be exceptional scientists, as I mentioned. Good. May I add something to this as well? So sure, if sure. I had to, so, you know, when I had to, to choose my masters, I, I didn't have, have so many opportunities like you do now. It's much more wide in the, wide in the open. So I, I think that for those applying that you should really look into the program we offer. I think it's a bit innovative in the sense that uh, we'll try to teach you the scientific method, working with very good scientists and very cool. I work with some of them. So they're very good and very cool and very curious. And also we have a state of the art technology at IMM. And so you'll be exposed to all of that. You'll learn a lot of new techniques. 
in the very non unbiased way so that you can actually um, decide uh, for yourself what is the best theme that you are going to. So you'll be really exposed as Pedro and Luis were saying, we want you to be exposed as much as you can to different themes, you know, to all the different scientists and also to all the students. So IMM is a research institute. We have a, um, a very um, good working environment and a very creative environment as well. And so you also will be exposed and take advantage of that. But I think you will really have to look into the, the, the program and you will see how, um, how different and how, how good it is, we hope. Please, uh, can you give an example of, of your own, your, like a technique that you're using that it's amazing and you do beautiful things. Can you explain to students and give an example of the kind of experiments you do? Okay, so actually we do very, very nice things for those who like neuroscience. I'm a neuroscientist. And so you will learn not only the fundamentals of neuroscience, so those, you know, neuroscience is not taught in any, any basic science. So usually you just learn cell biology. So we'll offer really how to record from neurons, what are neurons, what is what makes the neurons different. And also we will teach you how to approach neurons. So how you can record uh, in the biomedical approach. So either from models and for, from humans, which is very nice. And also very, um, you know, it's a very comprehensive course. One of the coolest thing we do, I think, it's we are able to record from in vivo from animals that are doing freely behaving. Um, so animals that are doing normal tasks for instance, learning and memory tasks, and then we can record and we can see in real time uh, how the animals is performing and what kind of brain areas and not, what kind of circuit, circuits are being activated. And you also will learn how to manipulate this, which is even, you know, um, very cool. So you can either, uh, you know, block certain circuits or activate certain and you see what happens to the behavior in real, real time. So we will teach you not only how this works directly, but also how to, how to train this in the laboratories. This is amazing, isn't it? Because as we learn about how the brain works, you can then uh, design algorithms and stuff to like artificial intelligence to mimic what we know about the, uh, our brains and to put into artificial intelligence. And so, and then you have other people like Luis Grasa uh, that he, he works with lymphocyte populations and he, he, he changes them and he, and he plays around with these populations and does amazing things like he applied to transplantation. You'd like to talk about a little bit about it? Like, like for example, using the students who learn how to use fluorescent cell sorting, what the fluorescent cell sorting is and what do you think, Luis? Yeah. Actually, I was disappointed with the answer of Louisa because I thought that the most interesting thing she does is <laughs> <laughs> that is a good example because a few years ago, Louisa was a pure neuroscientist and within our institute, there is a very good relationship between the different groups and Louisa starting a collaboration with the group of Bruno Silva Santos that does immunology and now uh, Luisa does a bit of immunology and Bruno does a little bit of neuroscience. So these things are infectious in a, in a sense. <laughs> exactly. They even, they even taught me some, some immunology. Yeah. Um, and, but, but it's true. So immunology for me has the big advantage that allows very easy access to the cells. And it is very, uh, and there are many powerful ways to manipulate cells in this way. Because with animal models, it becomes possible to uh, take cells with particular characteristics and sort the cells with those characteristics using, as Peter was saying, uh, fluorescent markers and machines, flow cytometers, that allow the sorting of cells with these different proteins. And then we can either study these cells in vitro and we do these frequently with cells from patients or in, in cells from mice, it is possible to transfer cells into different animals to investigate hypotheses, whether these cells are specifically suited to a, a given function or not. 
That's amazing. And for example, I'm a, uh, I, in addition to being a scientist, I, I, I'm a very keen sportsman and I do a lot of cycling. My muscles are always sore. So I always listen to very carefully to Edgar Gomez when he talks about muscles, <laughs> muscle contraction, the position of the nuclei after uh, extreme exercise. Would you like to tell us a little about, about it? Because as you, as you will see from Edgar, he is the most experienced and one of the world experts in imaging. He has wonderful images and uses the microscope like I use my bike. Would you like to comment on that? <laughs> well, I cannot comment the way you use your bike, <laughs> but I can comment of the things that we we do, and um, and yeah, we just like to watch things um, and see what happens, and uh, basically that's what we do in our lab, and we use muscle because it's just um, a very complex tissue. <laughs> But um, most importantly, we really like to see things happening and we watch them directly live and, and try to understand what, what is going on. So that's, that's the approach that we use and we've been contaminating everybody else in the Institute and vice versa. It's true, we, we even have some of your muscles contracting in our lab. So. Yes. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, and, uh, and I guess that's what, uh, that's the spirit that we want from this master is just we want to grab everybody's curiosity and, and we will provide toys and tools to play around for two years and the way that you would learn uh, some, some cool aspects about what it is to, how knowledge is generated. And I hope you will be able after two years to understand how those lines that appear in your book, in your books that you study, uh, how how they all that knowledge was generated, and that's the goal of this master. If you if you understand how that happens, and even and and, and likely you will be able to participate in the creation of that knowledge that gives rise to that line or even a word. Uh, that's very rewarding. So, yeah. Yeah, so you learn, yeah, you learn how to use a microscope, you learn how to use the fact sorting, how to put electrodes and, and read about the brain. You learn how to deal with mosquitoes <laughs> for the parasite, malaria. You learn how to deal with the mouse in a very humanely way. So uh, caring for the mice, but also doing important experiments to develop uh, uh, biomedical research. And you will be um, uh, leaving the masters with a with 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 a, dig, with a certificate that you can do animal research. So you'll be doing many things, uh, learning directly with the people that are actually doing the experiments. So you will have access to us, the old guys, the uh, principal investigators. But most importantly, you'll be shadowing postdocs. So the whole community of postdocs in the in in the at IMM will be will be on almost in a one to one basis will be with you and uh, directing you and you'll be learning how to uh, formulate a question. You'll be looking at what the postdocs are doing, what their projects are, and it will be, I think it will be fantastic. I mean, if I, if I was a student in your position, I would be really enthusiastic about this. I want to stress that, that the ratio of students to faculty is completely turned around. So the, the faculty, is uh, probably about 40 people that are that will be catering for 10 students and in a very in a very tailored way so that's to offer the students a very a, a lot of attention but of course that this has a drawback from the student because with all this attention the student will be asked to have a dedication that is uh, really full time uh, but in the end, I think that the, 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 the preparation for research will be, will be fantastic. I want also to stress something because when Edgar was talking about his research, I think that it, will imp it is important to notice that, uh, I think that everybody has examples like that, that now research is no longer a very isolated effort. So they are now no longer a scientist that does work alone from beginning to the end. Research papers do not have just one single author. And frequently it is necessary to have people with different expertise, people that can 
do crystallography or uh, bioinformatics or mathematical models or in vivo experiments or in vitro experiments or access to clinical data and so on. And it is also very important. And there was one student that was asking some time ago that, well, but can I do the work in this particular? Well, it is important to do work in, that, in the topic of your choice. But if you do not learn what everybody else is doing, you are losing access to a lot of expertise that will help your projects in the future. So it will be really important to have a little bit of knowledge about the bioinformatics, about structural biology, about all these aspects, because these will be critical for your development in the future. As a, a little a follow up uh, regarding this, uh, people are questioning if uh, through this course, they will uh, uh, have the animal experimentation certification at the end. Pedro, can you answer this? Sorry, what, what is that? So if, the, yes. By completing the course, the students yeah. will have the animal experimentation certification. Yeah, definitely. That's what I, I was trying to say. So you will attend uh, a course which will be recognized by the, uh, the, the, the national institution, which is it called the Ação Geral de uh, Agricultura and Veterinária, or Alimentação and Veterinária. Um, that we, is the official identity that recognizes your certificate. So yes, you will have this, uh, this certification. And uh, so you will join, enroll in, on the online course, and then you'll have practical um, uh, um, sessions, and then you will be evaluated uh, in, a, in a practical uh, exam. And in addition to that, obviously, you will have people talking about uh, the models, the mosquito model, the mouse model in different dimensions to, for example, I use the mice to study viral pathogenesis, how viruses cause disease. And um, uh, Luis uh, uses mice to study the immune system. Uh, Edgar uh, will be using mice to study muscle. He's just starting now putting mice into his research. Now he's becoming a real scientist. Before you just want, uh, he used uh, cell lines in vitro. Now he's going in vivo. So he's becoming, that, that's, that's something that like- I like just need to wish... talk to there, Pedro. <laughs> like we saw saying, you know, that, uh, just when to you come to IMM, that. you become even better scientist. No, basically I'm becoming lazy because until now I was building the muscle directly in vitro so without the mice. And now I'm realizing that it's just easier to work with the mice directly to answer some questions. So maybe I'll have to think again of my research line and go back to the fundamental <laughs> important aspects of research. That's a very clever, that's a very clever answer. Anyway, so yes, you will have the, uh, your, your thing, but you always uh, learn, you'll, in addition to have the certificate, they eat more to it than that. You will learn how to use the models and why these models are so important to use in biomedical research, okay? That's really important. I want to add something to Pedro because I'm doing, uh, I'm moving in a, away from mice because uh, we are realizing that many of the, so we study mice frequently because we want to have, to, to go closer to physiology. If we have cells in vitro, we don't know if the cells are behaving that way because they are in a very artificial environment, or if that is the way the cells really behave. And in vivo, in mice, it is possible to have some answers to these questions where we can get interactions between cells in a different way. But now our group in immunology, we are having a different problem that is maybe in some situations, this, what we see in mice does not represent the human biology. So we are doing more and more frequently studies with clinical samples from humans, healthy donors, or clinical samples from Hospital Santa Maria mainly. And that is another advantage of our location because our research institute, I think is unique in our country in being in a campus joining the largest hospital in the country and the, the, the largest medical school in the country as well. And this provides access to patients with a diversity of pathologies that can provide samples that may be very important for some of these studies. 
So I will not be surprised if Edgar in his muscle studies will be interested in studying samples from patients that have particular diseases that affect muscle in the same way that our group in immunology, we are studying samples from patients that have particular immune defects. That's very good. And uh, we also have people like doing, doing uh, cancer and looking at uh, cancers in, the, in, uh, in people and putting them into animals. And uh, it's amazing. It's, uh, so it's a really good environment. Um, it, uh, it has got all these dimensions, the fundamentals, uh, basic science, the uh, uh, science using animal models, and then the hospital, as Luis said, it's really important. And the interaction with other institutes as well. As Luis said, it's an international, the, the, the science is not anymore in the lab, in a researcher, it's across, uh, it's across walls, across countries, uh, across continents. So we collaborate with everybody. So you will have an international CV in a way. So if after your master's uh, and your PhD, you become like uh, employable anywhere in the world because it, you'll be recognized as a, a very well-trained scientist, young scientist. So you can pursue your career anywhere in the world. And I'm very confident to say this, and I'm sure my, 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 my fellow colleagues, they also agree with me. So still regarding the lab rotations, uh, how long will they be and can be done uh, in institutions other than IMM? Luis, can you answer this? Yeah, so these lab rotations are about one month long. So we have each student will have three lab rotations of so spending one month in three different uh, laboratories and they will be within the campus of the IMM. So it will be labs of the IMM and other labs in the medical school because we need to have the, the control of the program and there's, a, and there's a, a consequence. It is not designed to have these rotations in different, in other institutes. So now a question regarding the, the interview. Will the interview be presential and when will it be? Uh, the interviews are already scheduled. Flipa, you can answer that. Yeah, it's for the uh, 16th of July. 16th of July. We are still deciding whether the interviews will be presential or not, but it is likely that they will not be presential. But that is something that will be decided closer to that date. Regarding the, the application, is the CV uh, more valuable or the uh, personal statement and the recommendation letters? Pedro? Oh, Luisa can answer to that. Or Luisa, yeah, sure. <laughs> so actually we're going to look into, so the CV statement and the first application will be 70% and we'll have a, um, um, a short list and those within the short list will be, you know, uh, will be connected to the interview. Um, and then the final, if you say the final ranking will be between the 70% from the curricular plus statement and then 30 from the interview. Okay, so we didn't, we are not dividing in, within the CV and the statement. So we will look into your motivation together with your CV, of course. At this stage, we are not expecting you to have research experience. So that will not that will be not be the major uh, input as you may imagine. So your motivation and then uh, your motivation, your, um, your um, interest and your, especially your, also your interest in pursuing a, um, a scientific career. This is not supposed to be an end, a degree just to give you a final degree. We, we really would like to attract people that are motivated to follow up to become scientists and so that that will be really taken into account but then then of course the interview so i wouldn't I, I think that you you really have to work on your statement and as it was said before just try to uh, try to convince us what, why we should select you so what what will what is your motivation to be part of the program and what can you also bring to the program i want to add something that is important because for us more than looking into the past we are trying to through 
your past, your CV, to predict the future. Because what we want is to select the students that will be exceptional researchers in the future. So that is what we want to be, that you, what you should try to convince us is that, is about that. So we want that our master's degree will be the best master's degree in Europe in preparing the best students uh, for research. And in five years or six years, when we will be talking about the success of this master's degree, we have to be showing that, look, our students have done this. So they are fantastic. They can do whatever. And for, for that, we are trying to predict and to recruit those exceptional students that are likely to have a successful research career. Something perhaps I would like to add, to add is, don't be afraid that we're not selecting genius. There are no genius, right? We're selecting people that are clever, that are creative, and that really want to work hard because success comes with hard working. You may be a genius, one of these very, very few people in a population. If you don't get out of bed, you will never be able to exercise and to phenotype uh, your, your brilliant mind. So I think you guys, if you are committed, if you are clever and committed to hard working and disciplined work, we can guarantee that you, you'll be successful scientists because you will have a very good training at IMM. And that's what we expect from you. So don't be shy that the, or not, don't be underconfident that you are not at the intellectual uh, I that you, how I, perhaps I'm not fit for IMM. Of course you are fit for IMM, okay? You will want to welcome you, but uh, it's very important that you work hard and you work with discipline. You had that perseverance of an athlete that can run a marathon until, until the end. So it's all about working and being committed to, to the work, okay? So you can do it. It's uh, everybody can be a scientist, uh, a very good scientist if you put the effort in. Would you consider an application? Maybe. Sorry, Can I add something. You will add, yeah. Yeah, um, this is a general comment regarding recommendation letters or not recommendation letters, but like statements that uh, I find uh, usually people that are starting to get into the job market, they have difficulties of doing it. So one thing is what you want to be, and the other thing is what you are fitted to be, okay? And I think the most important thing you have to do is two things. One is you have to be as honest as possible when you write your statement um, to, to yourself, because if you're going to write something that it's not really you, but you just think it's something we want to hear, in the long run, it's going to be bad for you. And, and for the program and for everybody. So you should be honest with yourself. And the second thing you, sh you should read, you should pay a lot of attention of what we are stating in our call of what we are looking at and see yourself in that. You know, you, when you read the goals of our, our call, what we want, you know, work around that because that's what we want to understand from you. And the third thing, just to finish, <clears throat> is we are selecting, as, as Peter was saying, we're not looking for genius and things like that. You know, we're selecting people that are going to fit on this program, and we think it fits on the long run. But if you don't get into the program, it doesn't mean you, 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 you're not good and you, 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 you are a poor guy, whatever. No, it's just like we think you don't fit. But you will fit and will succeed in other programs, in other, um, uh, even being an excellent uh, scientist. And you know, it's only 10. So we have to choose. Maybe you were one that was the 11th. So don't feel bad if you're not selected and keep fighting for it. And you know, if you can come to us in three or four years or, or 20 years and show us your Nobel Prize medal and say, you, you didn't accept us, it's okay. We will be very happy to see that noble. We will, we will retract ourselves, right? <laughs> <laughs> another reason why this is important is and now I'm talking about uh, our experience in selecting uh, students for PhD programs is that frequently we don't want also a group of students with everybody with the same background. So we also want some diversity in the students that enter into this PhD program. So 
this does not mean that those 10 are the, the best and the ones that are not there uh, are not selected because they, they are worse, but uh, it is necessary to form a group as well. And regarding this, uh, would you consider an application from a health-related bachelor that doesn't have a lab background? Which? Yes, of course, we don't expect people at this stage of in their careers to have lab uh, background. That is something that will be acquired during this master's degree. So, uh, perfectly, even it, that, that is perfectly acceptable. Even if you don't know how to use a Gilson, a pipette, a micro pipette, we will teach you in five seconds. So don't worry about it. <laughs> it will do it for you. Actually, that is the easy bit. The difficult bit is to how to do the experiment, not to do the pipette. That everybody can do. Even even a neuroscientist, right? So. Regarding the dissertation, so the master thesis dissertation, uh, there will be a, a list of themes to be chosen by the students. Luisa? Yes. So again, and then you guys can, you know, uh, again, um, that will be, of course, a list of offers, as you may imagine, because some groups <coughs> will have interest in getting um, student and some don't or don't, don't have space or you know or have other master programs as well but there's an initial list but again as as Pedro was saying the lab rotations is for you to expose yourself to as many topics as possible and then the dissertation will be a match so we want you to feel comfortable with your topic so it'll be the match between the supervisor and the student okay so you are not going to do a dissertation you are not fitted into or you don't you have no interest whatsoever. And so of course, in our experience, usually this works very well because you have very different topics, but if you don't find the exact topic or one that you would like, again, you, the importance is to be really creative, you know, proactive, created and motivated. And I can assure you that we had, we had students that came to us with, you know, out of the box projects, and that were not, you know, in the initial um, in the initial intentions, and we accepted them. But of course, you'll have a list, you know, a, a, a background or at least a, a starting list to 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 work with. Can Can I just uh, add something? Perhaps that might be might be useful. Is that at this stage, guys, don't worry so much about the specific subject. By all means, don't, because you have to keep an open mind. You have. You're going to live until you are 90 years old. Come on, you cannot narrow your things to malaria or to viruses or to lymphocytes or to cancer. At this stage in your second cycle studies, what is the most important thing is first to be in an extremely good environment, a healthy scientific environment where you feel joy when you wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to work and I'm going to be in this fantastic, with these fantastic people and, uh, and, and interact with these people. And secondly, uh, you are going to learn how to use the tools. So it doesn't matter if you're working in the malaria, or if you're working in viruses, or if you're working in tumors, or if you're working in cardiovascular disease. What matters are the tools. And so that's what we want to teach you, how to formulate a question, and how to design a, an experimental strategy, and how to interpret the results, okay? Valid scientific results. And so it doesn't matter. So what matters really is the place, is the people, not the subject. The subject, you can think about it when you do a PhD, and even that, <laughs> it's relative because after your PhD, it's when you, when you do your postdoc, that's when you have to start, okay, I'm on starting to become on my own, I'm going to become an independent scientist, so I have to find my niche. And sometimes for people to find their niche, they need to go and do something else in terms of technology then to apply that technology to what they want to do, to their niche, to their scientific question that is going to drive them for many years doing research, okay? So don't worry about specific. You will not be fighting with each other for positions. As Luis said, we have 40, and that's really generous, 40 scientists per student. Actually, we have over 100 in, at IMM. 
Okay, so don't worry about the specific themes. Don't narrow yourself into, that's why we don't call these masters and uh, masters in oncology or masters in microbiology or masters in genetics. It's just research, right? And, and can I add something which is, we really would like to, you know, to foster open-mindedness as Pedro was saying. And one good example is that uh, lately we have been having this, you know, translate um, like cross border projects. So neuroimmunology, neuro-oncology or uh, a different. So what happens is that the students are exposed to so many different people, which is a very good thing. And then they come up with projects that are really a combination uh, between two different labs. So myself in my lab, I can tell you that I have three students that work with people from cancer, people from immunology, and even people from muscle, I, I would say. So <laughs> like Edgar, just to tease Edgar. And so we, we, we really, we really uh, encourage that. So do not really feel you know, limited by the field or the top topic. Just think about a very good scientific question, which may even be outside of any of these topics, but we can, uh, we can um, you know, uh, help you to answer. And how will the evaluation of the curricular units be made? Luis? Okay, so the evaluation will be very different in different uh, curricular units. All the curricular units will have an evaluation, but this evaluation will be frequently to assess skills that go beyond the, the knowledge of the topic itself. So a lot of this evaluation will be based on presentations, for example, discussing a scientific paper to show that the, the, the student can understand what is in the paper and can discuss and argue the points in favor and the, the weaknesses of that paper, for example, or to design an experiment and to prove that the student can think on all the different aspects that are important to consider when designing one experiment uh, and so on. Of course, there's some topics, for example, the animal experimentation, that is one example that Pedro already referred, is very specific evaluation because this leads to a certification. But uh, the evaluation will be very based on the acquisition of these skills rather than acquisition of textbook knowledge. And it will be very different from uh, curricular unit to curricular unit. A very specific uh, question that uh, arrived from Patricia Silva is what programs or softwares will be taught in the bioinformatics and data analysis curricular unit? All right, so that is exactly what I don't know because we don't have anyone here that works on that, uh, those uh, aspects. I, I can answer that. Good. Um, my so the answer is you will learn the softwares and the techniques that are required and the most and the best ones to answer whatever question is going to be raised during that training. Basically, I didn't answer the question, but I guess I, I, I just want to make a statement as we were all saying in the we're going to train you to, to get the best tools or find or create the best tools. There's something we didn't talk here, is that in some situations, some labs are involving in developing their own technology. For instance, we build our own microscopes if necessary, or we change microscopes if we need to. And a lot of labs are at that level of meaning, you know, the technology is not available, so you, you invented it. So that's another aspect that is important. So the software is the same thing. In some cases, you just have to create it. But absolutely. And if you feel free to email if you want something more specific. Uh, email Nuno Moraes or Rui Ribeiro on those things. So especially bioinformatics, uh, you go to the IMM site and look at the people 
that are, are, are experts in certain fields. And then Murais is expert on, uh, on bioinformatics and we are all very approachable. You can email us, any of us, and uh, ask us specific questions and uh, yeah. So don't feel shy for, 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 from doing that. On, on top of this, I just invite you really to go to the website of the IMM to navigate through phase one separated that is research where there are listed all the research groups and uh, go through all the different research groups, have a feel of what people are doing in the IMM and know that all those research groups are one way or the other involved in this master's program. So it will be a good way to become familiar with the diversity of the research that is done in our institute. Um, a little provocative, uh, just a little provocative question. What is the difference between this program and Nova Medical School Biomedical Research Masters? Are you aware of this, Pedro, of this master from Nova? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> I'm, I may be very diplomatic here. Uh, our degree is amazing. Our institution is amazing. And uh, by all means, come and see for yourselves. And uh, go and visit Nova. And uh, then you can make yourselves the comparison. Um, so it's, um, I hope it's different because diversity is amazing. So uh, I don't know if I answer your question. <laughs> Well, I think, I think that our program is a very different design. It is far more focused on research. It is, it is, if you look at the diversity and the quality of the research groups that are involved in this, in this uh, program, I think there are no parallels. So, um... yeah. There is one thing I would like to add. If there is one thing at least that we feel very proud of being the first ones to achieve, which is to give the opportunity to all students across Portugal to join our masters on, a, on an academic merit and that we support them in terms of in financial terms. So we pay at least the tuition fees and that makes a big difference from all the other institutes. And by that we're making a very strong statement is that we really want you to do well. We really want you to do well because we're investing in your careers. And so I think that should be a very good sign why you should select us. Um, not, uh, it's the scientific excellency, of course, the method, as Louis said, we have a very specific method of teaching the scientific method, not a thematic thing, not a textbook masters, but also we are committed to, because we're investing, we're spending money with you in your training. Um, and so um, I think that's a really good thing. If I was a student, if I was at your age, uh, I would look into it and I said, wow, these guys are really serious about this. They really want us to do well. They're investing on us. We have a question still regarding the uh, curricular unit uh, data analysis. Do you expect the students to have a, a good knowledge of statistics? Maybe Luis? Well, we, we don't expect the students to have a degree on statistics. Mm -hmm. I think that we, it, it is normal to have what is expected to someone at this stage on, on the career, but it is not designed to uh, create people that are professional mathematicians or statisticians. So uh, we do not anticipate students to have uh, a, a background in statistics uh, data analysis that is something that could only be acquired in a, in a specialized degree. That what, what is the, the schedule for the, the master? It's full-time, post-labor, Edgar, yeah. maybe? Um, so the, the schedule is, uh, is full time, full commitment. We want people that are full committed. And um, one thing we, we already discussed here is, you know, we, we from our side are giving the, the most and the best we have from 
from um, our faculty and university and institute and we expect the same from from the students so we are giving a lot of freedom as we said a lot of you build your own course but we also expect a, a return in terms of responsibility from the students so uh, we need a full commitment uh, we are looking for a full commitment for the people who enter the, the program. Okay, so it's all past one hour now. I don't know if, uh, well, do you think, Philippa, there are more questions? I think most yeah, of things have, have been said. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah, most of the, the questions now have been answered. Uh, we have a specific question about the application period and if we could extend the application period, taking into account the COVID-19 situation and the delays in obtaining the certificates uh, from the bachelor. Maybe Luis? Uh, that is something that it is not in my hands. I think that we have a very a tight schedule for the interviews and so on. So I think it will be uh, extremely difficult to extend the admission periods. Uh, we need, having said this, so my initial answer is that it will be impossible to extend the, this admission period. If we notice that in general, the Portuguese universities have a significant delay with issuing the certificates, maybe it will be necessary to do something about it but initially uh, my my direct answer is that i cannot see it will be easy to extend the admission period will this program reopen next year Luisa? well of course so of course, this is just the beginning. And Luis was saying, and, and as Luis was saying, that we, we want, you know, in five to six years to make this a very thriving and successful master's, right? So of course it will. This is just the first year. So we are launching it. And we are, of course, adjusting, prog probably adjusting also with the feedback of the first students and maybe some um, adaptations as all scientists do. We are always optimizing, um, but of course it will open. Uh, we have a specific question also about the curricular unit bioethics and science communication. Uh, is the science communication will focus on communication inside the scientific community or to the public? Well, ah, I must yes, say <laughs> that I am part. Yeah, and, and I am also part of this um, uh, curricular unit, and our thought is really to focus it on uh, how to communicate inside and to the scientific community, how to write well uh, papers, how to do great posters. Um, not, not, it's more focused on that than to the public. Of course, we will also try to have uh, a, a session dedicated to how to uh, outreach to the general public. And uh, INES will be included on this part from our communication office. Can add something to that. This is a good example of a unit that is contained in time because, of course, that there will be a time where it will be these units. But the communication and the training of communication it is something that will happen all throughout the, the course with feedback from the postdocs that will be shadowing the students. So that's why it is really important to have this tutorial why to progress through, through the course. And in this process, the communication with the public will also be important because in the IMM, there are many events where we promote science with the public. And of course, that these students will be invited to participate in these events, as well as all the research community in the Institute. We have only two questions now um, and we are getting in time, but I think we can answer them. Uh, so Ines Aldenga is asking, if, is asking if it's mandatory to have, to have recommendation letters in the application. 
I guess so, yes. Right, Luis? And uh, Luisa, maybe? Well, uh, to be honest, we as a scientist, we, we don't like much the mandatory thing because, <laughs> but usually you, you, you should get at least one reference letter from you know, one of your teachers, even if you don't have much experience, at least from your graduate uh, undergrad course. But I don't see, I mean, personally, um, at this stage, um, I don't see if you, if you need a reference letter with your CV. But I think it's uh, one part of the application to include some reference letters that would be useful for, for us to, to be able to select your, um, your application. Not from your friends, you know, like <laughs> choose someone. <laughs> but your, your best reference letter will be your diploma. How well you have done in your course. At this stage, at this stage, you would, wouldn't expect you to be, you know, to have a lot of working experience. So. So the other question regarding, sorry. And the state, I was just saying the statement is also very important on top yeah. of the. The statement the, is very important. The motivation be, statement, yeah. right? Because that's very personal, so probably we'll be looking to do that with more attention. So still regarding the application, a question from Ines Saldanha. Is it possible to submit the application with a certificate from the faculty in which we prove that we will finish the bachelor degree this year? Luis, maybe? It's a very specific pro, uh, issue that I would need to check with our with our um, um, administration. And I cannot, cannot tell if it is possible or not because I do not know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perhaps yeah. We, uh, we, those technical questions, uh, you should really email or phone the Institute for uh, Advanced uh, uh, Studies in, at, at the Faculty of Medicine. They have a very good team and they will answer all your questions, either by email or by phone. Uh, Institute Formação Avançada in Portuguese. Okay, so don't be shy of ringing or uh, emailing and uh, you'll get all these, because we don't know really, we are scientists, we don't know all these administrative things. Too many rules in Portugal. Yeah, too many <laughs> administrative bureaucracy, right? Uh, a final question, I think we can uh, still have time to answer. From pa Paula Huertas, is there anything as having too much lab background? So you you would be too much lab background. So you would be so in terms of selection, uh, would you be inclined to have uh, to choose someone with a, a lot of background uh, lab lab background or uh, no? I think Edgar is is, is good too. Edgar <laughs> should answer that. You already you already you already answered that before. Yeah, go. Yeah, it's um, it's yes and no. Uh, there's no clear answer of saying yes or no. It really depends why the person has so much uh, background, uh, because you know, on the positive side, could mean you know the person has been in different institutes, so gained a lot of experience with doing different research projects. Therefore, is positive. On the negative side, could be just the person doesn't know what is doing and jumping from one place to the other, not really doing any exciting thing or it's not really motivated and it's just catching opportunities. So the answer is is basically it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. We we don't we take that into account based on the context of that background. It's the same thing of saying someone that has a bachelor in chemistry versus in physics, which one is better? Uh, you know, it really depends on what it is. Or an engineer, it, it really depends. Or a biologist doesn't. It, it, it depends on the letter, the CV, and the, 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 all these statements we were talking about. So we don't have more questions. Probably you sh you can say the final words. Uh, about the master and what its uniqueness, starting with uh, Luisa. Well, of course, the uniqueness is that you will meet us, of course, and we work with us. So I think <laughs> it's more than, you know, more than 
enough to see that we are very um, we are very cool. No, but now um, you know, being serious about, it, I think this is a very good uh, opportunity. As as we told you, this is this was built in a very innovative way, in which we will we will teach you more how to answer a scientific question with no boundaries of technologies or fields or topics or even PIs. You see, so what are, what is the best approach to to answer my scientific question? And we try in every module we will be trying to do that with you, and to teach you to do that in a way that you can do it better than we do than we do in the end that's our goal you know that when students are better than ourselves and just to be really hard working very open-minded also not you know you don't have to to show off anything we just need people to be very open-minded motivated and um i'm sure you'll have fun as well because that's what we do so hard work a lot of motivation a lot of fun and very, very nice data in the end. That's, you know, the goal. Edgar, some final words? Sure. Um, I guess our idea is basically to give you guys and us the opportunity to, to work together and have this exposure to what it's to do science and what is to, to what, what it has to be done for that small line that you see on, on textbooks or in the newspapers about how things work. And if you want to know more of what you can do is basically go to our website or go to the news and search for our institute and whatever pops out in the scientific publications, it's what you could be doing in the next two years. Pedro? Uh, I loved what Luisa said and Edgar. I mean, we are different. Come to us. We are really joyful. Just, just come. Try it. Why not? It's really good. And last but not least, Luis. I just want to tell you that we are eager to know you. We have spent many hours to trying to prepare the best program for you. And now we are just one step away from the final stage that is to meet you in person and put actively uh, all these things that we planned in practice so that we will have a fun year together doing this master's course together. Great. So thank you all very much and uh, see you around. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.